Are you wondering what transparent and opaque colors really mean? Have you been using transparent pigments, yet your paintings don't have the luminosity you would wish for? Welcome to my channel Florist Patch. I am Sandrine Moji, and in this episode of Top Tips, I will explain the difference between transparent and opaque colors, and show you why things are not always as easy as it says on the tube. The literal definition of transparent and opaque is very simple. You have your light shining down. If you have a glass ceiling, the light is going to straight through. If you have a brick ceiling, then it's opaque and the light can't go through and will reflect of it. So transparent is when the light can go through, opaque is when the light cannot go through. So what does it mean when we apply this to pigments and paints? When it comes to pigments, it's not as simple as this. Manufacturers call their pigments transparent or opaque, but the particles of pigments that you have in the paint are not actually transparent. The light cannot go through a particle of pigment, even if it's a transparent pigment. The pigment will absorb some, it will refract some and then a little bit of it will go through but not that much. When we talk about transparent pigments it's not the pigment particles that are transparent themselves, rather the way that the pigment behave in the layer of paint on the paper allows some of the light to go through. So some of the light will go through, bands of the paper and then come back out again all some will go back to the pigment that will reflect to another pigment that will then come out. So quite a lot of light manages to go through. Now with an opaque pigment, the pigment behaves in a completely different way. You have the particles and because they're so tight together or they, the way they sit, they float on the water and sit on top of the paper rather than going in, the light cannot go through so it will reflect of the pigment and even if one ray of light manages to go through it will be blocked there so it will keep on bouncing underneath there forever and it's, there's very little chance it's going to eventually find a way back out. This is why when you paint with transparent pigments you get a lot of luminosity and when you paint with opaque pigments it's rather matte and flat. Let's put all of this in practice and see what happens when we paint. So we have our paper here and we have a layer of transparent paint that goes on the paper. Second case scenario, we also have a first layer of transparent paint. Third case scenario, our paint is a layer of opaque pigment, say for example a cadmium red. Now let's add a second layer of paint, like a quinacridone magenta. In the second case we're adding a second layer, this time it is opaque we're adding cadmium red. Third case, we're adding an other opaque paint, this time, let's say cadmium orange. Now let's add a third layer of paint, in this case, a tallow blue. And here we'll add tallow blue as well, so a transparent color. And in the third one, we'll add a third layer of opaque, this time cadmium red deep. So we have transparent, 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 opaque, transparent, and opaque, opaque, opaque. Let's have a look at what happens to the light in these three scenarios. So in the first case, the light is coming down and 
it can go right through the layers of paint because the three of them are transparent. Then it hits the paper and shines back through the layers of paint. In the second case, the light's coming through the first layer of paint, but then it hits the opaque layer of cadmium, so it cannot go any further. So you can see the blue, you can see the red, but the transparent layer underneath here is completely lost because the light cannot reach it. In the first case, the light comes down here, hits the cadmium red deep, and comes back up straight away. So the two layers underneath, although both opaque, stay invisible because the light cannot go through that layer. What will we see when we look at these three paintings? In the first case, we will see the three layers of paint and the paper underneath. So the blue mixed with the magenta mixed with a different sort of blue will make a purple, which will look very natural and very lively because when you mix paint straight on the paper, whether it's in the same wash or through layers, you don't get as flat a colour as when you mix on the palette or as when you use just one layer of paint. So in this case, you will have a bright purple made of two different blues and a magenta. In this case, you will have a purple as well because the light goes through the red layer. So you will be able to see the red and the blue which will mix optically through the layer and you will have a purple, although it would be a duller purple because cadmium red doesn't make a bright purple. However, because the second blue is lost underneath the layer of cadmium, the purple won't be quite as rich and quite as varied and lively as this one. In the third case, all you will see is that top layer of cadmium red deep. Everything underneath and the paper will be lost because that layer is opaque and it will hide everything that has been done before. And this is why using transparent pigments is very important. This with the paper, the white paper underneath and the free layer of paints will look extremely luminous with the light travelling around and bouncing off the pure white of the paper. This one will look a lot flatter, although there will be some variation. This one will look very flat because you've lost the paper and also a bit useless really because you've done all that work underneath and then you've hidden it so there is no point. If you use opaque colours you might as well paint a single layer of paint because everything you've done before will be lost. This is why using transparent colours is important but pigment is not the only thing in your watercolour paint. This means that other factors will come into effect and will influence the transparency or opacity of your painting. Pigment is the most important part of your paint because it's the part that gives the colour, the texture, whether it's granulating or not, and to a great extent the transparency as we have seen. But there are other things in a paint. The main other ingredient is the medium or vehicle or carrier. It can be oils, it can be plastic for acrylics, it could be egg yolk in egg tempera. In watercolours it's gum arabic. There's also a dispersant that makes the paint spread on the paper and not clump into unsightly little bits. And that could be ox gall or honey, or now there are some synthetic dispersants to replace the natural ones, because the natural ones vary in quality and are not always reliable. There's a fungicide to stop your paint getting mouldy after a while, and different manufacturers have got their own recipes, and usually the recipe is quite secret, they don't want exactly to tell what's in their paints. And the last ingredient we'll come to later is the filler. In a high quality paint there is a high proportion of pigment. Then there's the gum arabic and then there are the other ingredients that are part of the formulation. In a low quality paint 
there is a lot less pigment because pigment is the expensive part of the paint. So if you're a manufacturer and you want to produce paint cheaply, you don't put that much pigment in it. Then you still need to have the gum arabic and then the other ingredients and then you have a big gap in your tube. And this is where the filler comes in. Now that filler usually is chalk and chalk is opaque. So this paint straight away, whatever the pigment you've used is no longer transparent. Now the gum arabic quality varies as well. Gum arabic can be very expensive, very clear and pure, or it can be a lower grade, which is cloudy and a bit yellow. All this means that when you paint with this high quality artist grade watercolour, you will have a transparent, pure and saturated colour, giving you luminous paintings. When you paint with that one, you will have an opaque medium, a cloudy gum arabic and a lower grade pigment. Meaning, although you think that you're using a transparent colour, you don't get the luminosity in your painting that you are expecting from a transparent colour. How do you know if the colours that you are using are transparent and opaque? Well, most tubes of paints will tell you. You see that little square here? It's empty, it means it's transparent. Daily Rani have a more straightforward system, it just says transparent. Daniel Smith, as far as I know, there is no indication of a pigment transparency on their tube. Quo, I've got a little square as well. And this is what the square means. Empty is transparent. Half empty, half black is semi-transparent. Half empty, half black the other way is semi-opaque, which is more opaque than semi-transparent. And opaque is completely black. As far as pigments are concerned, the ones to avoid are the cadmiums. Naples yellow has got white in it. All the whites are opaque. Cerulean blue, Indian red and Venetian red. And any colour that is a mix that has any of these paints in the mix. In conclusion, Keep to artist watercolours, don't go for lower ranges that have fillers in them that will transform your transparent pigments into opaque paints. And it's not as straightforward as it used to be. In recent years we've had brands coming from Russia, China, Korea, and they call themselves artists, but they're not. There is no international standards for watercolour paint, so any brand can call their paints artist and just fill them with lots of rubbish. So check your brand, check your label, check your pigments and get good transparent watercolours that will make your work glow. Thanks for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave some comments in the comment section below if you have some tips of your own or if you have some questions. And I look forward to seeing you again soon in another Florist Patch video. Thank you. Bye.